This is a standing wave experiment in a water column with changing length. So if you hit a tuning fork, it creates some vibrations and sends that into the air column and it may form a standing wave if the conditions are just right. So if the length matches the wavelength of the tuning fork, ooh, you have a very nice sound. So you are changing the length of the air column basically by letting water out of the tube. So if I draw this tab here, you're just letting water out. So the water level will go down. So the tube is filled with water, then allowed to run out of it. The first two stationary waves occur when the air column is 0 0.14 and 0 0.42. Now what does that mean? So if you think about it, let's 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 look at this thing. When you have the water drop to a certain level, let's say this level currently, and the air column is 0 0.14. Let's just say, lah, huh? 0 0.14 meters. Is it meters or cm? Oh, meters. Okay, sure. Let's say this is the current length. If you suddenly have a loud sound, like it's like, oh, that means resonance, or aka a stationary wave has formed. So the first one that you can form, I guess you could say something like this. I'll try to draw it out. In air columns, one end where the water is, is the node. The air cannot vibrate there because that's a boundary. On the other end, if it's an open air column, this is where the anti-node will be. That's why we use an A there. So A for anti-node. And I draw this to show the pattern of the wave. So this is node, anti-node. Okay. Then maybe the water drop down oh first two stations so another stationary wave occurs when the water level has fallen really low maybe somewhere here i guess and the whole water column is 0 0.42 meters so this whole thing is 0 0.42 meters why was there another stationary wave because well you could say there's another oh man another loop that has been added so another overtone of the stationary wave something like that I should draw the left one as dotted to show that it's a stationary wave. So something like that. Okay. So this is roughly how the patterns of open ended uh close open closed tubes look like. Okay. So how do you find any information from this? How do you find the sound wave? Hmm. What's the wavelength of the sound wave? How do you use this to find the wavelength? Here's the very important clue. Now, this question has come out like I don't know how many times, at least three times in the history of the recent five years. So you better know how to do this one. You need to know that between each stationary length, this is half a wavelength added. Okay, so that means the difference in the length of the air column is half a wavelength. So you can write that out in the working like this. So lambda over two, which is half a wavelength, equals to 0 0.42 minus 0 0.14 and that is your, your your lambda you can find lambda here so you find lambda here okay so we can do this 0 0.42 minus 0 0.14 times 2 you are 0 0.56 meters and that is the wavelength of this tuning fork it's fixed it's constant what you are changing is the length of the pipe and by changing the length of the pipe you are able to create different harmonics, different stationary waves. So, yeah, I think that's all. When you see air column, you should really think of this, okay, difference between the lengths probably is lambda over 2. Yes. So let's see, the answer, 0 0.56, closest, is D. So that is how you can do questions like this, where you have water column stationary wave experiments. That's all for this video. I will see you in the next one.